All right, today we're continuing on this series on ways to heal stress and anxiety in the body, in the brain, the heart, empowered by the spirit and presence of God. My name is Kirsten Larson. I'm a wholeness transformation coach, and I help integrate mind, body, spirit practices to help Christians dealing with emotional and physical patterns of pain so that they can walk in the fullness and power of all that God has called you to. So I am excited to continue this practice. And as I mentioned in my previous video, there are a lot of reasons why anxiety and stress form and come in the way that they do. And many times we as Christians try to simply pray it away. We try to declare it and, and shout it out and move it out and almost in a way ignoring what's really going on on the inside. So if you've experienced that and maybe even experienced shame around it, I want to just come alongside you and tell you there's no shame. There are actually reasons why and pieces in your body, mechanics of the way that God has created you, that when you can learn how to operate in the way he's made you, you can actually see a lot more breakthrough in empowerment and actually bring healing to your mind, your body, and your heart, and then walk in all that he's called you to in, in peace and power. So I want to come alongside you today and share with you three powerful breathing patterns to overcome stress and anxiety. So last time we talked about body movements and how moving our body can actually help shift the perception of anxiety and shift the experience of it from a body perspective. Remember, we experience anxiety for many different reasons. Yes, sometimes it's spiritual, but many times there is the effect of it in our physical body. There's the effect of it in our mind, and there's the effect of it in our heart and our emotional world. And if we can actually learn to maneuver and move in the mechanics and biology and physiology of how God has created us, we can actually create a lot of headway and be able to think clearly, be able to move with peace and his presence in powerful ways. So I want to talk about the breath for a minute. If you've heard any of my videos or any of my teachings, you know that I love the breath. I have gone into deep, deep places studying um, the healing power of our breath, not only on our bodies, but on our emotions, on our mental health, and even in our spiritual health. There are so many facets to this God-given gift to us that when we use it properly and we know how to use it, you can actually bring a lot of healing and wholeness. There is something very beautiful in the very beginning way that God created us in Genesis 2-7 where God breathed his breath, his breath into our nostrils and gave us the, the foundation of life. And as we know, he uses that same breath later on with Jesus in John 20, 22, where Jesus breathes his breath into the disciples and they experience the life of the Holy Spirit. And in many cases, the word breath is actually the same word for spirit in Hebrew and Greek. I think we just need to sit on that for a minute. If breath is so powerful and we want the spirit of God, the spirit of life flowing in and through us, then doesn't it make sense that we should learn how to breathe properly? And as I've mentioned before, breathing is one of those very few things in our body that is both autonomic, which means it's automatic, and it's something that we can intentionally maneuver and manipulate and use. And I don't mean manipulate in a bad way, but I mean we can say, I can shorten my breath, I can lengthen my breath, I can deepen it, I can widen it, and I can hold it. And I can also do a lot of different things with it that actually shifts the chemistry of my body. And so when you can understand that stress and anxiety are part mental, they're part emotional, and they're also part physical and spiritual, then it begins to kind of underlie that we can connect with it in many different ways. And so when we can begin to shift with these breathing exercises, what begins to happen is we can actually have clarity 
to understand where the root of it is coming from. So we can actually create anxiety and panic and stress in our system by our breathing patterns. So it goes both ways. We can shift into a state of peace with our breath, but we can also alternatively unintentionally shift into a state of anxiety, panic, and stress by breathing improperly. There are, there are some very powerful breathing mechanics that when we begin to do this, we actually create a state of peace and healing inside of our being. And I believe this is the intention in the heart of God that we would understand and know how to do these things. And as you do them, so many things are going to begin to take place and unfold for you in this process. You know, if you just think about it for a minute, as I'm talking, I am actually using and manipulating my breath in order to create airwaves that you can hear and understand. That's pretty profound. It's an incredible way that God has created us to actually use our air to create sound. And we can also in intentionally or unintentionally use our breath to shift our states. So it's a psychological journey, a physiological journey, a biological journey, and a spiritual journey. So um, we want to just understand that and go even deeper with that, that we can use our breath to connect with God. We can use our breath to shift the state of our body so that it can actually hear the state of God. If you've ever been in, a, in an intense state of either anxiety, panic, trauma, or stress, you know that it's actually a lot harder to hear the heart and the voice of God. And so that's another reason why we want to learn some of these practices you know, when are some times that we might want to use these practices that I'm about to share with you? Maybe you're just simply noticing your nervous system is out of whack. It feels like it's been under stress or anxiety for a while and you need to release that sense of calm. And maybe you've been trying prayer and different things. And, and sometimes what can happen is we work ourselves up into a state just by knowing we're in that higher state. We continue it going a little bit longer. I've done that, been there, done that. <laughs> and I know many, many other people have. And so when we practice these, when we notice, oh, my nervous system feels out of whack, maybe you've had um, something that triggered you and or it's currently triggering you and it's going on in the background and you can feel everything arise and elevate in your body. Maybe there's just something that you're dealing with mentally and emotionally and it's going on in your brain. Uh, maybe you've just been running hard in life and so that stress levels are rising and as our stress levels rise, our anxiety levels rise as well. We also can have past wounds and traumas that can be stored in our system and when any sort of sight, smell, sense, feeling, touch, sound triggers that, it can release that sense again in our body. So the good news is we can also reverse all of that through different practices of healing, inviting God's presence in. But starting with the breath, it begins to actually bring healing, bring clarity. Here are some benefits of breathing practices. Uh, I will always speak to this. As I've said, I've, I've probably read seven or eight books on breath, taken a few courses on it, become a practitioner in it. And I just, I have found that it is so profoundly powerful and it's a free gift of God that we can use. We don't even have to pay for it. Isn't that amazing? So when you learn how to use your breath, um, here are some of the benefits that can happen just by learning to regulate our breath. When we regulate our breath, it actually shifts our emotional state. So we can learn to regulate and shift our emotions. It improves the health of our nervous system. It reduces brain fog and fatigue, which also in turn, as we learn to shift the breathing and chemistry in our body, it also increases our mental clarity and creativity. I know a lot of you love creativity, and with that, it increases our capacity for performance. And I'm not talking about uh, performance being put into a box of like, I, you know, I don't want to perform. I'm talking about, you know, being able to fully show up as 
the person that you are made to be in all that you are and perform well and do that with excellence. We can do that when we are fully aware and awake and alert and feeling good, full of energy. Um, shifting that breathing also helps clear the steering wheel of our nervous system. We don't want to be led by um, the intensity of our nerves, kind of always being nervous. We're not meant to stay in a nervous state. We're actually meant to continually train it to shift in that parasympathetic state and continue to teach it to widen our resilient window right? When your window of resilience is wide, that allows you to not be moved and shaken by so many things coming at you in your life. And breathing is a way of doing that. It also helps determine your lifespan. This is, that's powerful. And we're going to talk about that later on. But they say that people who actually breathe out in and out their nose actually tend to live a lot longer. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And thankfully, this is one of the tools that we're going to use in this journey. Your breath actually promotes healthy digestion. So if you're experiencing any digestive issues, which I know come with a lot of stress, anxiety, so that's really important, your breathing can actually shift that and help heal that. It actually helps encourage proper lymph function. So clearing out your lymph nodes and clearing out your lymph systems is something that real is very healing and cleansing for your body. Um, it impacts our focus and concentration. It influ influences our blood pressure and flow. Heck, our breath actually affects our ability to release weight off of our bodies. Um, not talking about that during this episode here, but you actually store a lot of toxins and weight through the lungs. And as we release those toxins, it actually helps our body release weight. So they say that out of every 10 pounds we lose, eight of that is affected to and linked with the lungs in our system and having a healthy set of lungs. Isn't that profound and powerful? Um, so I'm not here to spout out breath facts for you, but it can be really helpful to understand why these practices help. So let's go ahead and jump right into our three breathing practices to help reduce and heal our system from stress and anxiety. Okay, so the number one, number one, if you don't get anything else from this, is learning to breathe from our nose. So nasal breathing with good mechanics. And if we are really needing to shift out of a stress and anxiety state of being, we want to shift to nasal breathing and bringing that to a slow state. Optimally, they actually say that optimal breathing is five breaths per minute, which is really slow for most people, but it actually shifts the entire chemistry of your body. And I'm going to talk about that pacing on breath number three. So I'm not going to go into that for right now. But what you want to know about breathing through the nose is that it's your mouth is for eating and talking and your nose is for breathing. Okay, so if you remember that one thing, come away with that you want to during the day and during the night, you want to breathe through your nose. And that's actually going to believe it or not shift your system regularly into a state of the parasympathetic rest and digest healing state. It helps trigger the relaxation and healing state in your body and helps bring you into a state of peace. When you breathe regularly, short breaths in and out your mouth, it actually triggers the sympathetic nervous system. And that's your stress response, your anxiety response. And so what that does on a regular basis, if we're breathing in and out of our mouth, even if that's the most comfortable, it actually continually creates that state of stress in our system. And we don't even realize that it's happening. It's, it's happening behind the scenes. And that's why we have to be very intentional to begin shifting our breath. So what I like to do with this one is partner it with a very powerful tool called visualization or imagination. I've always loved Ephesians 3.18 and Ephesians 3.20, that God loves our imagination. And when we partner our mind and our imagination with our breath, here's how that looks. Slowly begin just picturing yourself breathing that air in 
and following your breath with your mind into your digestive system or into your diaphragm, into your stomach, and allowing that to just expand and then slowly releasing it and letting it out your nasal passageway. So you want to really slow that. As you slow it, it will help open up the passageway in your nose and it will help begin to actually activate all those rest systems. So you have all these little spindles on the bottom of your lungs. And a lot of, if we breathe too short regularly, if we're only breathing to the top of our lungs, we're not activating those spindles. And those spindles are really important for shifting us into a, a peaceful state, into our parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, so proper mechanics is really important as well. So if you find yourself like, saying, you know, it's kind of hard for me to breathe in and out my nose. One reason for that is you're out of practice. And when we stop breathing through our nose, our nasal passageways become inflamed and it makes it harder to get air into that system. Okay, so first of all, you have to start just kind of practicing this piece. And breath practice number two is going to help really open that up quite a bit. All right, so here we go. This is what we need to do is we really need to slowly bring our breath in and out our nose. And what I like to do, again, is partner with that imagination and partner with the Holy Spirit. If God breathes in me and, it, and that breath of God creates life, breathe that breath in. And just picture the light of God. God says, I am light and in me is no darkness at all. Picture God's light and the Holy Spirit filling every cell of your body and filling your lungs and filling you as you breathe in. And then just picture all stress, all anxiety, all tension releasing as you slowly release it out your body. Just slow it down. And that very act of slowing it down increases carbon dioxide in your system, which actually helps release triggers of trauma, anxiety, and stress. Isn't that amazing? It's actually a chemical response that helps shift that nature and in that process, okay? So begin that practice on a regular basis and you will shift and heal a lot of different things in your system, but especially you will begin to experience greater levels of peace and clarity in your body, okay? So practice number two, is doing short breath holds. So remember how I said if your nose and your nasal passageway is kind of clogged up or it's hard to breathe, that hard to breathe feeling creates a lack of oxygen. And that lack of oxygen actually tells your brain, I'm having anxiety right now and something is wrong, even if nothing is wrong. So if you've ever experienced a panic attack or anxiety or even a trigger and you don't even know what's wrong, this is something that you can do right away to begin releasing that. Maybe your nervous system has become overactive, or maybe you smelled something or saw something or heard something that sent a trigger from long ago you don't even have words for. Your body actually recognizes those things, and so we want to actually just bring that peace back into that state. So short breath holds um, actually helps calm down your breathing, and it actually is very powerful for people who have experienced severe trauma in their lives. Uh, a regular practice of this actually helps bring relief and resetting the nervous system and helps release this out of your system. So amazing, right? Just such a gift of God to be able to give that to us. So here's how you practice this, okay? Just shift to that nasal breathing. Shorten it down, connect with the presence of God if you can, and then breathe out, exhale, and then hold your breath. And then breathe in, return to normal breathing, exhale, hold your breath, inhale, return to normal breathing with your nose, exhale, hold your breath, inhale, return to normal breathing. And I, per round of doing that, I would do six to eight breath holds, okay? Is it necessary to hold your nose? No. But 
is it really powerful? Yes. When you hold your nose, that actually pulls a, a chemical called nitric oxide. So you didn't know you were getting a chemistry lesson today, did you? And that nitric oxide, when you breathe it back in through your nose, it actually brings another layer of healing happening in and through your system. It also helps reopen your nasal passageways. So if you've experienced, um, maybe you've experienced some allergies or you haven't been practicing breathing through your nose for a while and it's swelled up a little bit, or maybe it's just swelled just because it is, that practice of holding your nose, holding your breath a little bit and breathing in and breathing out is actually going to also help open your, your airwaves. And that practicing of opening your nose will also help reduce the level of anxiety in your body because you're able to breathe again. And your brain, when it can sense that, oh, I'm breathing through my nose and I'm breathing deeply and slowly, your brain begins to send a signal to your body saying, I'm okay and I'm safe. And that's one of the things we want to practice and do. So again, the practice is exhaling, doing short breath holds, how long? If you're not used to this practice, anywhere from just two to five seconds. That's all. Just a few seconds. If you've done this a little bit more, holding it for a little bit longer, 10 seconds, can be even better. Um, that helps pull the carbon dioxide and really helps slow the breath and the breathing down, which sends signals to the brain and body that you're okay. Something that I like to do, I like to do it for even longer because I've been doing this for a while now. And I love in that stillness, when you've exhaled your breath and you've practiced this a while, there's this beautiful place of stillness where I just love to connect with the presence of God. And I just focus my attention on the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit within me, which the, the Word of God tells us Jesus lives in us. And so I just focus on Him and focus on receiving his peace. And then as I inhale, I inhale his peace. And I just picture that peace flooding my entire body. And then just picture that spreading through my system. And then exhale, hold. Okay? So practice number one is nasal breathing, slowing that down. Partnering it with visualization is very powerful. Par practice number two is short breath holds doing about six to eight of them from anywhere from two to 10 seconds and really noticing and picturing yourself connecting with that peace that God has and provides. All right. The last one, um, this one kind of goes in a rhythm of the third step of this, but this one is really great if you're experiencing a lot of just kind of intensity and your mind is going all over the place. Uh, there's different stages of anxiety, panic, and stress that happen um, in our system. Sometimes we shut down. Sometimes we get real kind of scattered. And this one really helps kind of bring you back to center. And that's doing breath counts, okay? And so there are many different counts. You've probably heard of lots of them. Like, which pattern do I pick? It doesn't matter. Little secret from a breath practitioner it doesn't actually matter what pattern you pick. So the, the key to breath counting, and what do I mean by that? Breath counting is breathing in and counting the seconds and maybe holding it for a little bit, counting those seconds, breathing it out, counting those seconds, holding it, at, and so forth. I'm going to share a couple of different patterns that are really healthy and pattern uh, for your system to do. But one of the things that happens in this process is that by counting, your brain gets brought back into the present moment. And your brain is now focusing on something very rhythmic. So if there was a trigger that was causing the anxiety, your brain is now brought into something that's very peaceful. It's connecting with the breath. And anytime your brain connects intentionally with your breath, you actually bring it out of that triggered state. So when you bring your brain and you say into the counting process and you begin breathing, that process alone is profoundly healing. Okay. It's beautiful. But here are three different patterns that are very 
healing for the body and great breath counting methods. So first one is simply an in and out pattern. So ideally five or six seconds in and five or six seconds out. If you can maintain six in and six out, that's called coherent breathing. And that is a very healing, that's our ideal state of a breathing pattern that is used for uh, healing your body, your brain, and brings you into um, an ideal state in your nervous system. And so that's just in and out. But not everyone can get in and out for six full seconds. So if you can do five, that's also equally as, as powerful. So five to six seconds in, five to six seconds out, and just getting into a rhythm and a pattern. That also helps take you from maybe what could be scattered breathing to just a very rhythmic flow. Another one is in, hold, out, in, hold, out. So one that's become widely popular is called four, seven, eight. So what that means is four seconds in, hold for seven, and slowly exhale out. Does it matter the numbers? It's not as important as the numbers as it is that the inhale is shorter than the exhale because a long exhale actually really activates the parasympathetic nervous system. So doing a shorter inhale and a really long exhale is very powerful and cleansing and it helps shift you out of that state. But again, doing the inhale, holding for a, a couple seconds, long exhale. This pattern, the one that's most widely known is four in, seven hold, exhale for eight, and then an immediate repeat of that pattern. You really only have to do that pattern about four times. They don't really recommend doing it any longer than that. You might get a little lightheaded. So just four in, seven hold, eight out, four times. And you'll really shift your system. And the last method of breath counting is called box breathing. Uh, any form of box breathing is actually really beneficial. So there's for it, box breathing is named that because you go in, hold, in, hold. So it's kind of like a, a box for the, the account of numbers. So some common ones would be four in, hold for four, four out, hold for four, four in, hold for four, out, and so forth. And just repeating that. And that what that does is it just slows your breathing down, brings you into a very calm state. And this is a great one to meditate on Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. Right? Just meditating on that and allowing your whole system to be still, especially in the breath holds and just counting those patterns. Six, 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 and six is also another box breathing one that's well known. And that aligns with the coherent breathing pattern of six and six. I would like to share mine that I like the, the most is what I call the rectangle, and that's uh, six in, three hold, six out, three hold, six in, three hold, so six, three, six, three. It's just kind of a gentle hold, and you're aligning that six in and six out pattern, and that really takes you to a, a longer breath per minute count slows you down and keeps you in that gentle rhythm. And I love personally doing that method before entering into a state of prayer because it just kind of heightens, takes everything that's been heightened and it calms it down, brings it into a very gentle, breath-filled, aware state and allows you to just connect with the presence of God, allows your whole body to come into a calm state, it allows your mind to focus, and it allows you to just connect with his spirit in a way where all the stuff that's been going on is now calm and at peace. So I hope this is really helpful for you. That's my passion and my desire that you would experience his peace 
his rest and begin to learn how to do the mechanics of your body so that you can actually enter into that even quicker and experience healing and wholeness. So again, begin breathing through your nose, nasal passage breathing, slowing it down, doing short breath holds, and then practicing a form of breath count. So anytime you, you feel your nervous system shifting into that state or you can experience any sort of panic or even trauma or even things that are happening, um, you know, with trauma, you got to really be really careful and talk with a practitioner. If you have questions, you can ask me or, or anyone who's familiar with that because breath can be unique in that department. But when it's heightened stress and anxiety, your breath is going to be a very powerful tool. Um, even just to calm your whole system down when you've been experiencing a lot happening in your life. So God, I just release peace over everyone who's listening. I release your breath to blow in and through all the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual cells of every being and body listening, that they would experience the peace of God that surpasses all of our understanding in profound and beautiful ways. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, well, like and subscribe, throw your comments down, and I'd love to hear from you on if this was helpful and if you tried some of these practices.